The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Most entrepreneurs create value and build wealth by bringing disparate parts together to create something new. However, two of the wealthiest real estate moguls of all time built their fortunes with precisely the opposite strategy. Sam Zell was one of the richest people on earth and is considered the creator of the Contemporary Real Estate Investment Trust. When he sold Equity Office to Blackstone for $39 billion, it was the largest leveraged buyout in history and among the largest real estate deals ever. But what if I told you that Sam's early success lies in a hidden strategy that most real estate investors have never even heard of? We'll explore how he learned this groundbreaking approach from another real estate mogul, how he used it to amass his enormous fortune and why it has remained relatively unknown to the broader world of real estate investing. If you pay close attention, this video will change the way you think about real estate and business building forever. Let's get into it. Sam Zell was born in Chicago in 1941 to Polish Jewish immigrants. His family had escaped Poland by train hours before Hitler's army bombed the tracks that ran through their town. His father, Bernard Zell, was an entrepreneur in his own right and instilled the values of creativity and hard work in his son. As a student at the University of Michigan, Zell found himself drawn to the world of real estate. He began investing in student housing, making more money than most of his classmates. But despite his precocious money-making abilities, no one would have guessed that Sam was destined to become one of the greatest entrepreneurs on the planet. Everything changed when he opened this book. William Zeckendorf was one of America's greatest real estate developers. He owned New York's famous Chrysler Building and the venerable Hotel Astor in Times Square. He helped develop the Magnificent Mile in Chicago and originally bought the land where the United Nations headquarters was built. Sam Zell wanted a similar success and read Zeckendorf's autobiography. While reading, one particular strategy caught Sam's attention. It was called the Hawaiian Technique. Instead of thinking of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, it inverted the concept and reinforced viewing the whole through its individual pieces. Zeckendorf's Hawaiian technique led him to buy large, undervalued properties and then break them into smaller, more valuable parcels for resale. According to his biography, he'd been fishing on a Hawaiian beach, thinking about how to diversify his pool of investors. At the time, he could only go to banks or insurance companies to fund his projects. But by calculating everything separately, the ground leasehold, fee position, operating leasehold, in a residual position, Zeckendorf could access a wider swath of investors and fund more deals. As a real estate business grows, capital can become the key constraint. Imagine you have a thesis for where to invest and develop. You can tell your plan is right because you're on the ground seeing the properties and you have direct access to the numbers. But if you can only go to a few dozen banks and institutions in order to fund your project, you're stuck if they don't see the same thing you do. By having more sources of capital, you can implement your strategy at a scale that dwarfs your competitors who are more capital constrained. So this allowed Zeckendorf to create value where others saw none. Here's an example. Zeckendorf bought one Park Avenue in Manhattan for $10 million. By the time he was done, it was ultimately worth 15 million because he valued everything separately. The titles, the land, the lease, the individual mortgages. This technique actually anticipated the more aggressive financing strategies that are much more commonly employed today where every single asset is finely divided apart and all sorts of disparate pools of capital are unlocked. Zeckendorf just saw it earlier. And back when Zell was reading about Zeckendorf in the 70s, this was a powerful insight. Sam was captivated by the idea and adopted the Hawaiian technique as a mindset, a way of looking at the world that challenged conventional wisdom and revealed hidden opportunities. Armed with this new framework, Zell's real estate empire took off. 
He started by purchasing undervalued properties in the Midwest, breaking them into smaller parcels and reselling them at a profit. With the wind at his back, Zell ventured into the realm of corporate acquisitions. He saw potential in distressed companies that others dismissed as failures. With his unique perspective, Zell would acquire these businesses, restructure them, and sell them off for a profit. This approach earned him the nickname, The Grave Dancer as he was known for dancing on the graves of dead companies and breathing new life into them. Zell's foray into corporate acquisitions exemplifies how the Hawaiian technique isn't constrained to real estate. By identifying hidden value where others saw none, Zell was able to transform struggling businesses into profitable ventures. His portfolio became larger and larger every single year. And like Zeckendorf, he wanted to unlock additional pools of capital in order to grow. So in 1976, Zell founded Equity Office Properties Trust, a REIT focused on office buildings. EOP became the largest office landlord in the United States before being sold to Blackstone Group in 2007 for $39 billion one of the largest leveraged buyouts of all time. The Grave Dancer tap danced to an enormous payday. The story of Sam Zell and the Hawaiian Technique is a testament to the power of creative thinking and of learning from the entrepreneurs who've come before. By embracing a little known strategy and applying it to various facets of his business, Zell became one of the most successful real estate moguls in history. You can learn a great deal from Zell's journey and from studying the Hawaiian technique. You can also learn even more by watching our previous video on Warren Buffett and how he studied Henry Singleton on his way to becoming one of the greatest investors of all time.